Welcome back to the training. It's Frank Calabro Jr. This is going to be video number three, Bitcoin storage and security. Pay very close attention to this video. Make sure you have some note-taking material. This is the most valuable lesson I will ever be able to teach you. This could be the most valuable uh, lesson I ever teach you ever about anything, about marketing, about advertising, about Bitcoin, about anything, guys, about life, maybe, possibly. This lesson could possibly save you hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands. Perhaps it could save you millions of dollars. I don't know. I've never heard anyone talk about this before. I've never heard anyone explain this before. And if someone made a video like this, which you're about to watch right now, this very minute, if somebody made a video like this and handed it to me, I would probably have five, six, seven, possibly eight million dollars added to my wealth if I seen a video like this. I had to learn some things the hard way, okay? Let my pain be your gain, okay? Allow my lessons to be your lessons. Let's get right into this. Okay, now this is Bitcoin storage and security. Like I said, pay very close attention to what I'm going to talk about, what I'm going to show you. And if I give you an idea, pause the video, write down whatever your idea is, because you're going to get a lot of ideas. I'm going to plant a lot of seeds in your mind, okay? This is something that you have to think about. This is something that you have to do. It's not an option, okay? Like I said, nobody teaches this. Nobody talks about this. But I'm going to teach this, and I'm going to talk about this. Okay, now before we get into the hard the, the, the lesson itself, let's talk about this. There will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin in existence. That's the way it's designed, okay? Satoshi Nakamoto wrote the white paper and designed it to be this way. Now, it is estimated that 30% or 7 million are lost forever. So in reality, there's probably about 13 million coins in circulation, maybe a little bit more. And there's going to be like another million mined over the next 100 years, okay? But 30% of them are lost forever for many various reasons. We're not going to get into all the different reasons, how that could happen. There were many reasons for this. The bottom line is you do not want to lose any Bitcoin ever, okay? I've lost Bitcoin before, okay? I've lost Bitcoin three times, okay? I'm not going to tell you the amounts, because you'd probably have a heart attack. But the purpose of this lesson is to show you how you can't lose Bitcoin if you follow the procedures that I'm going to teach, okay? I can't stress this enough, guys. I cannot stress the importance of this video lesson enough. Now, if you have not figured this out yet, here's how this really works. If you're brand new, you know, there's a lot going through your head and there's a, there's a learning curve to Bitcoin. It's really not that difficult. Actually, once you get involved, it's so simple, but there is a little bit of a, a learning curve involved with Bitcoin. Your Bitcoin is not actually inside of a wallet. And what I mean by that is if you set up a wallet on a mobile device, well, those coins like aren't inside of that wallet. Okay. If you have a hardware wallet, okay like a Ledger Nano or a Trezor or some other device, the coins are not actually inside of that wallet. What the wallet does is it allows you access to the Bitcoin. The Bitcoin is actually sitting on a wallet address on the blockchain, and you can look it up. We'll talk about this in a future lesson. But the wallet allows you access to the Bitcoin. This is something that you need to understand, okay? The coins aren't like actually inside a wallet, okay? I know it sounds like, it kind of sounds like it is, you know what I mean? You hear Bitcoin wallet, well, the coins must be inside the wallet. It's actually not. The wallet is basically the gateway that allows you access to the Bitcoin, okay? So your Bitcoin is not inside of a digital or physical hardware device. Whomever has the password or PIN number can spend send or trade the Bitcoin attached to the address or any other cryptocurrency. That's how it works. So whomever has the password or the pin number to the wallet, 
they can actually send, spend, they can trade the Bitcoin, they can do whatever they want to do with it, okay? They got access to the wallet. Your wallet equals access to the Bitcoin, okay? This Bitcoin is sitting on the blockchain and it's moving around all over the place. Why is it moving all around all over the place? Because people are spending it. People are sending it. People are receiving it, okay? People are buying it, okay? All kind of different reasons. Listen to this one. Only the person that has the secret key, phrase words, phrase words, can restore the wallet if the wallet is stolen, lost, or destroyed, okay? And that's the key right there. That's really what you got to protect more than anything is the secret key or the phrase words, okay? Let that sink in a little bit, all right? Those coins aren't like inside of a wallet. I know it sounds like it is. It sounds like, yeah, the coins are inside this wallet. No, the wallet is really just giving you access to those coins. The coins are sitting on the blockchain. The coins are always going to sit on the blockchain. We talked about all that Bitcoin that's lost, right? That 7 million Bitcoin that's lost. Well, you could find addresses on the blockchain where coin hasn't moved in many years. The coins have not moved in many years. Now, either the owner of that address has basically left them there, cold storage. They're long, like Frank Calabro Jr., right? They're going to save their Bitcoin for the next 10, 15, 20 years. Or they lost access. They can't get to them. So the coins are just sitting there. They're going to sit there forever till the end of time. No one's going to be able to move those coins unless you have access to those coins. Okay. I think I clarified that. The bottom line is you must protect your private keys. And that's what this lesson is really about. Protection of your private keys. Now, here is something that I'm going to suggest that you do. Your passwords. Now, what do I mean by passwords? Your passwords to everything. Every single thing that you have a password to, how are you protecting that information? What are you doing to protect that information? What are you doing to back up that information? These are questions that you need to ask yourself. Your PIN numbers. Your PIN numbers to everything. Where are those PIN numbers? How are those PIN numbers being stored? How would you recover those PIN numbers? Once again, you may have an awesome system. And if you do, you're like ahead of 97% of everybody. And then your secret phrase words or your private keys, whatever you want to call them. Okay. So this is information, this data, you got to protect your data, okay? One thing that you can do to protect your data, and I just want to say this before we go any further, I've lost 100% of my passwords before, like everything. I've lost 100% of my PIN numbers, and I've lost 100% of my secret phrase words, okay? All of this was stolen from me. It was taken from me, okay? Once again, that's the purpose of this lesson, Okay. I've had all this stuff taken from me and I didn't have layers in place. Now, one thing you can do is you can get an encrypted device. You can find these devices just about anywhere. These are encrypted devices. They're password protected. And what you can do is you can put text documents or Word documents or notepad documents or whatever kind of document thing you want to use. And you can have an individual document that's labeled as an example, Nano Ledger One, Cleaver Wallet App, TronLink Wallet Extension. And you can have a folder or a file, I should say, a file for each and every single thing that you have a password, PIN number, or secret phrase to. And you can have this information stored on a device that's encrypted. Wouldn't that be awesome? Wouldn't it be awesome to have complete backup of everything? Of course it would be. You should have this. We all should have this. We should all be thinking about protecting our data all of the time. Okay, let's go forward. Now, here is an example. Let's just say I key in the PIN number to my encrypted device. Okay, I key in a word, uh, PIN number to my encrypted device. And I have a, a text document in there that says Clever Wallet App. And I click on that. And I open it, and let's just see the data that's inside of that particular text document. Now, here's an example. This is just made-up information. This is not real information. It's made up for training purposes only. 
Now look at the information that we put inside of here. Our login pin, this is to our Clever Wallet app. So our pin is 123202, okay? And notice how we put that in there twice. You definitely want to put your information in there at least two times. Three times is even better. Because if you copy and paste or if you mess it up or something happens, you've got it in there backed up inside of your file, okay? Inside of your document. Then we've got, and as an example, we've got a, a Bitcoin address that we set up. Once again, this is just made up. And we've got that stacked in there twice. So if someone says, hey, I need your Bitcoin address, now we can go into our Cleaver Wallet app and grab it. But this is also backed up information. You need to know what your address is on the blockchain that you set up. And we stacked it in there twice. Three times would be better. And then, as you can see in this training example, we set up an Ethereum wallet. Same thing. We stacked the address in there twice. This is a send to address. And it's listed in there. And any other wallets that we set up on our Cleaver Wallet app, okay? We want to have our addresses in there. Our, these are our public addresses, right? Our send to addresses, our receive addresses. Lots of different terminology. It all means the same thing, right? It's a place where you can receive Bitcoin or Ethereum or some other crypto. Also, what we got in here is our 12-word restore keys, or secret phrase words, or whatever you want to call them. It all means the same thing. These are just made up for training purposes. But notice how we have them stacked in there twice. And of course, they're in the correct order, 1 through 12, right? From left to right. And this is an example of how you can store your information. Okay? Once again, I'm planting seeds in your mind. Okay? I only wish somebody taught me all this. All of this that I'm showing you, I had to teach myself, guys. I had to teach 100% of this myself, and I learned the hard way. You lose some Bitcoin, I promise you, you'll figure out things quick. Okay, now, how many copies of this device, you know, uh, with all of my passwords, PIN numbers, secret phrase words, etc., how many copies of this should you have? Because if you have one device like this and you've got all of your data on this one device, what happens if this device is lost, stolen, or broken, right? Or even destroyed? What happens? What, I mean, what are you going to do, right? So even if you have your data on an encrypted device, which is awesome, right? It's super safe. You've got your device on an external uh, uh, piece of uh, hardware that's encrypted, that's awesome. But what if that device comes up, like I said, stolen or broken or missing or lost? Or, what do you do, right? So here's what I'm going to suggest at the very minimum. Once again, I'm just planting seeds in your mind. You can go overboard, okay, like I do. I'm going to say that you have a minimum of three copies of this. And they're all exactly the same, like they're identical. You can even label these. You know what I mean? You could label these uh, one, two, and three, or whatever names you want to give them. Okay, primary, backup, uh, backup two, or you know what I'm saying? Whatever you guys want to call it. I mean, but you can label these, and I'm going to suggest having a minimum of three copies of this. Now, you also want to have three hard copies. We'll talk about this in a moment of your private keys minimum. What are hard copies? Handwritten copies, guys. Yeah, not only have digital copies on a, an encrypted device like this, but you want to have hard copies, okay? And what I do, I laminate my hard copies. I've got a machine that laminates just about anything. All right, we'll talk about that more in just a moment. Okay, let's take a look at this. So we got passwords. All of our passwords, you need to have backups of all of your passwords to everything. Literally anything you got a password for, you should have those passwords backed up, okay? Every single thing you got a password for. You probably already have a system, right? Now, I'm not going to I'm not going to get into this. <laughs> I I can start talking about some things, but let's just stay on topic. You should have a system for your passwords. And you should have a system for your PIN numbers and your secret phrase words. Now, 
your secret phrase words, like we talked about, you could have it on an encrypted flash drive. You could also, you need to have hard copies, like in the middle there, it says recovery phrase. It could be 12 words, it could be 24 words, but you need to have hard copies of these uh, phrase words. I suggest a minimum of three. You can make more of these, but a minimum has got to be three. You can also get yourself like one of these uh, external encrypted hard drives, okay? And you can have more than one of these devices. And what that does, you can store a whole bunch of data on one of those devices. You've probably seen these things before. It's just an external storage device. It's encrypted. You know, you can have your, uh, you know, your passcode the same as your flash drive if you want. You can make it all the same. So you don't need to remember different passwords. But the bottom line is, all three of these items, you need to have these layers, I call these layers, in place, okay? You got to think about this stuff. You got to not only think about it, you got to do it, guys. You have got to protect this data, this information, okay? I promise you, if you lose 100% of your passwords, your PIN numbers, and your secret phrase, if you lose all of that, you're going to be kicking yourself for days, guys. I promise you, okay? I'm speaking from experience, I'm planting some seeds in your mind. I'm telling you what you should be doing at the very minimum to secure your data. Okay. Now, let's just say you got three encrypted devices. Let's say you got three recovery phrase cards that you made and you laminate, laminated those. The reason you want to laminate them because now it makes those, um, they can't be destroyed like from water. If somebody spills something on them or what have you, right? That something like that can very easily be destroyed from water damage, okay? So if you laminate them, well, then the chances of being destroyed from water damage obviously decreases, you know, about 99%, right? Unless they're submerged, you know, whatever. But the bottom line is I would highly recommend laminating those. And let's just say you have an encrypted uh, backup device. You might have one or two of these. Don't really matter. So you've got all of these these layers in place with your data. Okay, now what do you do with these things? Okay, where do you keep your encrypted devices? Where do you keep your flash drives? Where do you keep your hard copy uh, recovery phrase? Where do you keep those cards? Where do you keep your uh, external encrypted storage device? Where do you keep that device? Okay, now I can't tell you where to keep them, but I can show you where not to keep them. That's even more important. We're not to keep them. Don't Whatever you do, don't put your information on one of these things. I did this for years. We probably all did this. Don't put anything on something like this. Somebody could steal this. Somebody could copy this. Somebody could, I mean, just your whole, everything you have is just basically on a piece of something you could just plug in and just copy in a second. And your stuff is gone, man. I mean... Get, just get away from this stuff altogether, man. The only thing you put on something like that is something that's, you know, non-secure, something that you don't care about. If it, You don't care if somebody gets a copy of it. You know what I mean? Never keep your stuff plugged into the side of, a, you know, a USB port on your laptop or on your, your computer. You would never just leave your stuff plugged in so it could be stolen, right? It's a, like part of your computer. You leave it in all the time and all that kind of stuff. I used to be lazy like that. I used to do crazy stuff like that. I never do that kind of stuff anymore, Okay. But do not do that. Do not store your data. Just plug it in my computer and just leave it there. It's safe there. It's attached to my computer, right? Nobody's going to mess with it. This is the last place you want to store stuff. In a desk, in a desk drawer, okay? We talk about the most unsafe place to, to keep your data. It's so obvious. This is where you're going to keep all your stuff. I mean, this is the last place you want to store anything that's valuable, like passwords, PIN numbers, in seed phrases. Now, file cabinet, this is just too obvious. Even if it's locked, don't store your stuff here because everybody knows you're going to store your stuff there. It's too, never store stuff in a file cabinet. A file cabinet, what do you put in there? Important stuff. What is your password, your PIN number, and your seed phrase? Important stuff. So you would never put it in there. Banker box, okay? Once again, just way too obvious. Same thing as the file cabinet. It's just way too obvious. You would never store your data in one of these banker boxes or a file box like this, okay? You would never do this. These are places you will never store your data. You never 
want to store your data in these places because it's just too obvious. Your phone, okay? That's about the worst place to store anything ever. I mean, just, I don't even need to get into the reasons why, okay? Your phone could be stolen, lost. I mean, man, in a second, your, your phone could be gone. Never store anything on your phone. I've never stored anything on my phone. That's one thing I've never done. I never store anything on my phone. My phone just got like photographs and just pictures, but there's nothing. There's no pins or password. I've never stored anything on my phone. I've never done it. I never will. Thank God I've never gone down that road. So the bottom line is you've got to protect your data. You have to come up with solutions on where you're going to store your stuff. Okay. Think about it. And I mean, think about it long and hard. Okay. Think about what you got to do to secure those devices so that they cannot be found. And you definitely don't want to put them in obvious places like this. Okay. Now let's talk about, we're going to talk about these in just a moment. This is a hardware wallet, also known as a cold storage device. We'll talk about this in a moment. But I want to mention this. You can see this comes in a beautiful white box, and it comes with the device itself, okay? This is a Ledger Nano S for this training purpose. And it's got a lanyard, and it's got a data cable, and it's got a nice little card where you can write down your 24-word seed phrase, okay? Now, you wouldn't take these items and put them back in that beautiful box and then stick it in your desk drawer. Not only storing that card with the device is insane because if the device comes up missing, they also have the seed phrase. You would never store those two things together. And I just want to mention this in this lesson, okay? I know it's tempting to do something like that, but you don't want to do something like that. Okay. Our homes. Now, these are our sanctuaries, where we live. We like to believe we're safe in our home. We like to believe that our belongings are secure. Okay, we like to believe all of these things, and I actually believed these things. If you guys don't know, I served in the Marines for 12 years, okay? I was a Marine 25 hours a day, eight days a week. You can ask anybody that served with me, okay? I totally believe in the Bill of Rights, the Constitution. The uh, James uh, Madison did the best he could when he drafted those Bill of Rights. But make a long story short, my home was invaded. All of my property was seized. It was never returned, ever, to this day. This was years ago. It still hasn't been returned. Perhaps it never will be returned. I don't know. I got a court order signed off on by a judge and the state was supposed to return my property and they said, we're not going to comply with the judge's court order. We don't care. We're keeping your property. We're going to break the law. Not only are we going to break the law, we're not even going to honor the Constitution. So I'm just telling you guys, you think that you're secure in your home. You think that your information, your encrypted devices, your uh, hardware wallets, your, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, your hardware wallets, your, uh, say you have a backup storage device, like an external hard drive. You think all of this stuff is secure, but it's really not, okay? So start thinking about having some layers in place, and what if your home was destroyed? If the natural disaster, okay? I don't want nothing to happen to your home, obviously, or to you or your family, but what if something like that happened, Okay and your home is destroyed for whatever reason, would you be able to recover your Bitcoin, your fortune, okay? Something you got to think about. You got to think about this stuff. You've got to have layers in place. Like I said, I only could dream that someone would have taught me a class like this. I would have thought differently, okay? I live my life like 180 degree from when I used to live a few years back, okay? It's 180, like it's night and day. Like there's, it's not even the same thing. Like my life is completely different because of my, my property being stolen from me, just taken from me by freaking Nazis that don't even follow the law. So I want to plant this seed in your mind. What are you going to do to, put, to protect your data? Where are you going to store that data, okay? And how are you going to recover that data if your items are stolen from you or lost or whatever, okay? 
for whatever reason. Stuff's destroyed. Now, I want you to look at something here. This is a, there was two pages of things that were stolen from me. And this is not about, oh, let's all feel sorry for Frank Calabro Jr. The heck with it, guys. You know what? This is 100% my fault. I take 100% responsibility that I didn't secure my stuff. I didn't know any better, guys. Okay? But you are going to know better. Okay? This is the second page. There's a whole other page before this one of things that they took from me. But on this page, they took my phone. So my phone's gone. Okay? Phone is gone. Brand new phone, too. The phone was like not even 30 days old. Brand new phone, gone. They just took it from me. Never returned it ever. I think it was like an $1,100 phone. Just took it. They also took my Ledger Nano S cryptocurrency hardware wallet. Where was it? Top drawer, black filing cabinet. So you think keeping your stuff in a filing cabinet is a safe place, guys? Because you're in your home, you think, oh, no one's going to come into my house and steal my stuff. Want to make a bet? There's the proof right there, guys. Okay? Scroll down a little bit farther. What does it say? I had another Ledger Nano S hardware wallet. Where was that one? File cabinet, upstairs office. Do you see the lesson, guys? Do you see what I'm trying to teach you? Okay? Now, even if those devices were stolen, make sure you got those the seed phrase. You got those words. Okay? Make sure you got those words. Make sure you got those words. You got multiple layers of those words. Okay? All right. Enough. Let's talk about these hardware wallets. Now, I didn't even know what a hardware wallet was at first. Um, it's also known as a cold storage device. I was actually, I lost some Bitcoin. The first time I lost Bitcoin, lost Bitcoin a couple times, my own fault. I was hacked. And this was years ago. It was Coinbase. And I was hacked. And what they did was something really sophisticated because it involved my phone and it involved Coinbase. And it was pretty tricky what they did, that what they were able to figure out and what they did and how they intercepted some information, okay? And I'm not going to get into details how they did it. But the bottom line was, now this really wasn't my fault. <clears throat> it was really Coinbase's fault, and it was uh, my phone carrier's fault. But they never reimbursed me. They're not going to reimburse me. They don't care, man. And I lost like maybe $2,000 with the Bitcoin, so it wasn't really a big deal. You know, when you're making sixty, seventy, eighty, dollars 100000 dollars a month, you really don't care if you lose two grand, right? But Bitcoin was less than, I don't know, like less than 700 bucks at the time. So I probably lost about two and a half Bitcoin. What's two and a half Bitcoin worth now? I don't know what it is right now. Go look it up, man. It's probably a lot. I probably lost a lot of money, guys. What if I still had that two and a half Bitcoin? It was only like $2,000 worth at the time. But I was hacked from Coinbase. And that's when I figured out what a hardware wallet was. I didn't even know what it was yet. It was still early in my Bitcoin days, okay? Bitcoin was still like brand new, man. People were trying to figure it out back then, okay? But it's also known as a cold storage device. And what you can do as you begin to amass a large portfolio, and of course, a large portfolio could only be, you know, like one Bitcoin. Now that could be massive, a massive amount of Bitcoin. Or, or if you're long in Bitcoin, and what I mean by that is you're going to hang on to your Bitcoin for years. You're not going to sell it like this week or this month or even this year, maybe, right? And you want to store it someplace that's really secure you're going to start looking into cold storage or a hardware wallet, okay? This is going to be a solution for those people. If you want to keep your coins in a hot wallet, like a software wallet on your phone, there's nothing wrong with that. They call it a hot wallet because you can get to it right away. You can spend it. You can send it. You can trade it. You can sell it. You can do whatever you want to do with it. But if you want to secure your Bitcoin, the most secure way possible is a hardware wallet, okay? And you can send your crypto assets to a wallet address that you set up using a hardware wallet. Now think of a hardware wallet, basically, it's kind of like a Bitcoin safe, okay? It's for long-term storage. Also, I wanted to keep my, I didn't want to keep a bunch of coin over there in Coinbase after I learned my lesson. I'm like, man, I can't be leaving my coins over there. Like, that's like not secure, man. Now, Bit, now Coinbase has changed over the last five, six years. They've, they've, it's a lot more secure, all kind of stuff, but still 
I still wouldn't leave a large amount of coin over there. I wouldn't do it, guys, okay? I won't I won't do it, okay? I won't do it. A software wallet, like we just talked about, also called a hot wallet, is better for daily or quick access transactions, okay? So a hardware wallet is more cold storage, coins you're going to store for a while, and you really don't want to mess with them. You just want to let them sit there. A hardware wallet is an actual physical device that allows you access to your stored cryptocurrency assets. Pretty awesome, huh? You actually have a physical thing now. Instead of like a phone or a, like a phone is like you have a software wallet. This is a physical device. Now, some of the popular hardware wallets, you may have heard of these. Maybe you didn't. I don't really know. The Ledger Nano X is a popular one and the Trezor Model T. Okay. Now, once again, the coins are not physically on these devices. These devices allow you access to the coins that are sitting on the blockchain. Okay. These are called hardware wallets. Much better to use something like this than a Coinbase or anything else for that matter. And if you want to store crypto long term, there's nothing wrong with this. But there's a lot of people I know that use these daily. Like they just keep their coins on one of these devices. They won't even use anything else. And there's nothing wrong with that either, okay? It's totally your own preference, but I want you to be aware of this technology, okay? And I use a, a Ledger a Nano X. I have S models, and now I've moved over to the X model. So, and the Trezor is supposed to be awesome too. I haven't personally used that device, but... I know a bunch of people that use it and love the thing. So either one or both, whatever you want to use, these are available and it's going to be a solution for some of you. All right, now, bottom line, guys. You're 100% in charge of protecting your Bitcoin and cryptocurrency assets. I can't make that more clear. I couldn't possibly make that more clear. You're 100% in charge. So just start thinking about how you're going to protect your coins your devices, your cards, okay? Think about where you're going to keep these things, okay? You may want to have multiple uh, layers in place, okay? So like I do, like it's impossible for me to lose my wallet again because I've got so many layers in place. It's impossible for me to lose my stuff again. I learned the hard way. Don't, guys, please, don't learn the hard way. Come up with a multi layer system for storage and security of your Bitcoin. It should be impossible for you to lose your Bitcoin if you act and have recovery procedures in place, okay? It should be impossible. Set up a system. Make it impossible for you to lose your wealth. Highly recommend that you memorize your seed phrase words. Believe it or not, you could actually do this in about three days. Okay, if you're slow, it might take you five days. Okay, you'd be, you'd be amazed how quickly you can memorize 12 words. It's not hard to memorize this. Now, should you have hard copies and encrypted copies? Absolutely, you should. But in addition, just memorize your words. You memorize your words, you're golden. Even the 24 words, you can memorize these words, guys. And it, believe it or not, it won't take a couple of days you memorize these words. Okay, so if you're taking notes, I would definitely write that one down. Memorize my seed phrase. I'd memorize it, guys, if I was you, but do what you want to do. Just planting some seeds in your mind. Okay, guys, there it is. There's Bitcoin storage and security. What we're going to do next is I'm going to send you the next video. Look for it in your email. It's going to be Bitcoin, the Bitcoin story and history. We're going to get into some pretty exciting stuff, guys. A pretty fascinating lesson, that next lesson. Something you're definitely going to want to check out, man. Especially if you're brand new, man. I'm going to open your eyes to some things that you may not even realize yet about Bitcoin. But Bitcoin, you can go as deep down the rabbit hole as you want to go as far as the story, the history. It's fascinating, guys. It's an addiction. And once you get hooked, there's going to be no turning back. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm good. At least I warned you ahead of time, right? All right, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you got extreme value uh, out of this video. And I really hope that I prevented you 
uh, from doing something careless, okay, with your Bitcoin or with your Bitcoin phrase words, okay, and uh, your devices and such, okay. I really hope uh, 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 that I planted some seeds in your mind so that you know exactly what you're going to do and you come up with a plan where you can secure your Bitcoin and keep the stuff secure so that there's no way that you can lose any of your wealth, guys. This stuff is very valuable, cryptocurrency. It's only going to become more valuable as we go forward in time. You got to protect the stuff. All right, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. I'll see you in the next lesson. Frank Calabro Jr. signing off. Thank you.